<laughs> okay, so here's some trapezoids in the real world. This building is actually in Houston. You see that? <laughs> you see that trapezoid right here? I thought that one was just really pretty. We have a trapezoidal window, a trapezoidal table, and then a trapezoidal cutout in this ancient ruin. Pretty nice. Okay. So this is not on, don't put this on your family tree yet. It's just the definition of a trapezoid. It's a quadrilateral, so that means four sides, with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Not two, one pair of parallel sides. Um, do put this on your family tree. Do put this. This is trapezoidal anatomy. That just sounds fun. Trapezoidal anatomy. Okay, please label your trapezoid on your family tree. Not quite good enough to be a parallelogram. Didn't make the cut. All right, so the sides that are parallel are called the bases. Base, base. Be careful because the bases are not always going to be the top and the bottom. The bases are the sides that are parallel, okay? So it might be the top and bottom. It might be the left and the right. The bases are the sides that are parallel. The legs are the other two sides that are not parallel. The legs are the ones not parallel, so they can be wherever they want to, but they are the non-parallel sides. And then this is kind of weird, the base angles. And you're probably like, Miss Tanton, you're pointing to all four angles. How can all four angles be base angles? Well, they're not base angles by themselves. Base angles are paired up. So this angle paired with this angle, they're a pair of base angles together. But there's a separate pair of base angles. This angle and this angle make up a base angle. Just think about the base angles surround the bases. So here would be a pair. I'll call it A and A. It surrounds this base. And then this would be another pair, angle B and angle B surround this base. So together, angle A and A are base angles, and angle B and B are base angles. Okay, let's move on to the properties. Property number one is that a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. One pair of parallel sides. I'm going to show this next property, but please promise me you won't write it down yet. I'm going to show the property, but don't write it down yet. The next property says, Two pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. Now that's a lot of words. Two pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary. Now what I'm going to tell you next is not in a textbook anywhere. I just made it up. But I think it's going to help you understand this property better. Okay? Now, the angles that surround the bases are called the base angles. So can I just call the angles that surround the legs, can I just call them the leg angles? I'm making this up. You're not going to see this in a textbook. You're not going to see this on the internet. I'm making this up, but I think it'll help you remember it better. So see how 80 and 100 are surrounding the leg? Those add up to 180. And see how 150 and 30 are surrounding the leg? Those add up to 180. So for property number two, you can either write two pairs of consecutive angles or supplementary, or you can write the leg angles are supplementary. Whichever one makes more sense to you, as long as you promise not to tell anyone else that I told you that those are really called leg angles. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, this is not a property, so don't write this on one of your properties, but I need to remind you what a mid-segment is. A mid-segment is simply a segment that joins two midpoints. So a mid-segment is a segment that connects a midpoint to a midpoint. That's a mid-segment, okay? The mid-segment happens to be parallel to the bases no matter what. Even if the legs are not the same length, the mid-segment will be parallel to the bases. 
This is property number three. This one you actually write down, it is a property. The length of the mid-segment is the average of the bases. Yep, you can either write the formula or the words or both. It's very, very intuitive. That means it makes sense. That mid-segment is the exact middle of the lengths of the bases. It's the middle. It's the average. Add them up, divide by two. That's all there is to it. Add the bases up and divide by two. Not rocket science here. The length of the mid-segment is the average of the bases. Can we keep going? Base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. Average of the bases. Okay, now we're going to move on to an extra special trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid. I am sure you can go ahead and guess what it means. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with two congruent sides. The legs are congruent. Averages. Oh, goodness. Hi. Oh, thank you. I would not want to learn math from your history teacher. The legs are congruent. It's property number one of an isosceles trapezoid. The legs are congruent. What do you think the next one says? What is the second property of an isosceles trapezoid only? Nope, not the leg angles. Good, V. Those are the base angles because they are surrounding the base, not surrounding the legs. The base angles in an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Just like in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent, right? I mean, guys, a trapezoid is honestly just a triangle with his top cut off, right? If you were to keep going, it's just a triangle with the top cut off. So if the legs are congruent, then the base angles are congruent. Okay. Last property. Guess what else is congruent? The diagonals are congruent. That's pretty cool. So in an isosceles trapezoid, three things are congruent. Legs are congruent. Base angles are congruent, and diagonals are congruent. Congruent, congruent, congruent. Imagine that. Lots of symmetry here. That doesn't take very long to write. You got it? Ready to do some examples? The word symmetry should be symmetrical. Don't you think? We need a different word for symmetry. <laughs> okay. Example number one. I'll call on you guys. We got nine and eleven. Let's talk about them. Wait, Rishi, are you sure that's your final answer answer for why? Rishi, you want to try that again? Okay, let's talk about X. So here's the long way to solve for X. Are you ready? Base one plus base two divided by two equals the mid-segment. And you could solve for x. Or you could do what we did last semester when we found end point. Instead of finding midpoint, we're finding the end point. So you could play leapfrog. So you could say, how far do I leap from here to here? Oh, minus 4. So how far do I leap from here to here? Minus 4. 13 minus 4 is 9. So you could use the formula, or you could play leapfrog. Rishi got 5.5. Very good. So how do you find how long this segment is? You add up the bases and divide by 2. You average them. You find the middle. You average. Yep. Let's keep going. Uh-oh. Can you handle the algebra? Of course you can. Let's set this up together. Base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. 
What's the opposite of dividing by 2? Multiplying by 2. So we're going to multiply this by 2. I'm going to clean this up while we're at it. 3x plus 25 equals 2x plus 28. Edriel, tell us what you get for x. Alexandria, you have AB. And Ariana, you have EF. So it looks like x is 3. AB is 9. Oh, that's sad. Wait, 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 wait. No, find DC. That's no fun. And what about EF? We change AB to DC because obviously AB was given that silly. 17. Okay, good. Moving on, right? Oops, sorry. The height of trapezoid ABCD is 4. Find the length of the legs. I'll let you think about this one for a few minutes. I'll work it. Okay, so the height. So the first thing you would need to do is, oh, goodness, not, I can't even accept that. That's not okay. First thing you would do is draw the height in. The height is 4. Find the length of the legs. So I would draw the other height in. And I know that from here to here is 6. So I would do 10 minus 6, which is 4, right, and divide it by 2. So I know this is 2. I know this is 2. So if I wanted to find the length of the legs, then I would do Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus 4 squared and take the square root of that. We're actually not using anything about a trapezoid, right? We're not really using anything other than this is an isosceles trapezoid, so that helps us out a little bit. Okay? So, um, what do we get there? Square root of 20, 2 root 5. Are we okay with that? Last problem of the day. An isosceles trapezoid have, has legs of length 5 root 2 centimeters and base angles that measure 45 degrees. If the shorter base is 15, find the length of the longer base. Okay, so we would start by drawing ourselves an isosceles trapezoid. Tick mark, tick mark, parallel, parallel. The legs are 5 root 2. And the base angles are 45. This is a base angle. The shorter base is 15. Find the length of the longer base. We don't have a mid-segment, so we're not going to go the mid-segment route. But we do have an altitude that we could draw. And if that's 5 root 2, sorry my drawing is not to scale, it would be 5, 5, 5 root 2. The same would be over here, right? 5, 5, 5 root 2, and this is 15. So the measure of the longer base would be dun, 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 25. Very good. You have a homework tonight called trapezoids. Please do your homework and come with questions tomorrow. Doesn't drawing the altitude cut the 45 degree angle? Okay, good question. I put the 45 degree angle there and I didn't even talk about it. Um, out of, you know how there's two pairs of base angles. Out of my two pairs of base angles, which ones are acute? This is acute and this is acute. The other base angles are, well, they're 180 minus 45. 180 minus 45. This base angle is 135 and 135. So, yes, I do cut an angle apart, but I actually cut that angle into 45 and 90. Do you see what I'm talking about? I know you can't even see that 45. 
How do you know where to put it? Okay, V, so you can trust your picture. In a trapezoid, one side is going to be longer than the other, right? Now, whichever side is longer, that's going to be the side that produces the acute angles. So from that base, this is my longer base, your sides are going to have to come in to make a shorter base on top. And so that's where your acute angle is going to be. One of the base angle pairs have to be acute, and one of them is going to have to be obtuse. So you'll know, based off of your picture, which one's acute and which one's obtuse. That's how I knew where to put the 45. I would never put the 45 in the obtuse angle. I would put it in the angle that's acute. 